If you're like me, you've come across generative AI in some pretty surprising, very human places lately. Suddenly, we're able to input text into a computer program and have it output for us seemingly unique conversations, images, music, even 3D models. With AI creeping increasingly into our daily lives, some of it seems kind of helpful. Some of it maybe not so much, right? I've been studying AI, creativity, and cognition since 1998. So, yeah. When these tools came out, uh, I was incredibly curious. I mean, it was fun and fantastic that I was, for instance, able to generate cute baby photos, but in impossible situations, like, you know, baby flying a jet airplane or baby cuddling a lion. <laughs> or, you know, this, right? You know. <laughs> I, like maybe some of you, have found that these tools can be uh, really effective, even cathartic, for helping express what's going on in the inside to the outside world. If you have any friends or family that have experienced mood disorders, you might be familiar with wanting to better understand what they're experiencing. As somebody who has had their own share of internal difficulties in the past, I've found that these tools can be really compelling for helping communicate personal experience in a much more visceral and visual way. For instance, this is what AI tools a couple of years ago generated online uh, artwork and images to look like depression. And this is anxiety and mania. In the right context and with the right setting, these, like, these tools can be really fun and, and useful, but ask it to generate something that it hasn't been trained on, and they can be kind of terrible, or at least boring. Generative AI tools are these black boxes that are wrapping up our online content, cutting it up into little pieces of information, and gluing it back together to spit to, out to us. For instance, use one of these tools to generate the, a day in downtown Atlanta. And it'll look something like this. It'll always be the average day. It's never going to be one of those like, outlier days, those special days like when it snows every once in a blue moon, or, right? or, or uh, when we have the science fiction parade downtown every year. And you know, for some tasks or settings, doing OK, being average, is totally fine. But that's usually not what we're shooting for when we're trying to be creative. Take Santa. There are thousands of images of Santa online that companies can, right or wrong, freely scrape to train their AI models on. So can we generate pictures of Santa? Yes, of course, definitely. We can generate Santa. All right. Conversely, can we generate images of tacos? Actually, a little bit harder, but yes, we can, we, we can do tacos. So now let's try to take just a little creative step. Can you regenerate Santa holding a taco? <laughs> kind of, right? <laughs> a friend and I have been trying to generate this particular image ever since this, these tools came out. And they can just never <laughs> quite Get it right. <laughs> it, it never gets the right size or shape taco, partially because it, it simply hasn't been trained on images of Santa holding tacos. In other words, AI only knows what it can extrapolate from the data that it's been trained on. Creatively combining ideas, being transformationally creative, and all within the grounded experience of being a person is still, thankfully, a uniquely human endeavor. These tools are double-edged swords. They give us output that looks a lot like human creative work, right? But it's lacking the intent, inspiration, and social grounding that human creativity enjoys. What about using AI to generate ideas for us, like novel, high-quality, good ideas. It's, it's great that you can use AI, for example, to generate ad slogans. 
but is it really going to give us anything especially eye-opening without a creative person that's in the loop? Is an AI going to read the room and give us just do it or got milk? Or is it always going to kind of shoot for the average, for the mediocre? Actors like Tom Cruise can be deep faked to live on screen in perpetuity, giving us Mission Impossible 5009, right? Doesn't that sound kind of boring? <laughs> so where is human culture going if we're stuck on repeat with AI rehashing our stories, our music, our films? Is this technology pushing us forward, or is it more designed to keep us stuck in the past? What if, instead, AI could be a collaborator with us, unlocking our own creative potential and opening up new avenues for human experience? I've been fascinated with studying how we make meaning together, how we improvise, how we co-create as people, whether it's uh, business coaching or uh, brainstorming a project, uh, or actors on stage. Improvisation is a core part of human creativity. So I've dedicated my entire career to studying it, and subsequently, how computers can improvise with us. From a project on building AI that could improvise on stage with humans, uh, human improvisers, to the study of pretend play with objects to uh, an AI robot that can collaboratively doodle with us. I found that, at least partially, computers can understand, reason about, and represent the co-creative processes that we engage in when we improvise together. Let me show you some work in action that goes down that path of AI improvising with us and affording new kinds of experience. It's called Lumini. Lumini is a 10-year investigation into how computers can improvise with us in embodied and physical domains, like dance. The projected avatar you see is an early prototype. And it's not pre-programmed how to dance, but rather it uses machine learning to learn dance moves by dancing with us. Lumini was first installed in public places for anybody to just come walk up to and teach it their, their funky dance moves. This is an installation in San Francisco at the Kodame Arts and Tech Festival. And here it is at the Smithsonian National History Museum in DC. Uh, folks of all ages uh, were really uh, curious about and engaged by uh, interacting with AI in a really different and expressive way. So, how does Lumini work? First, it has to see us. We use infrared cameras to detect the human body, and it maps our body to a skeletal representation. It looks like this. The camera is tracking and estimating where our body parts are in relation to that skeleton as we're moving about in space. But that data is kind of hard for a computer to learn from. It's literally just taking our dance moves and turning them into a bunch of numbers that look like this. So the joints on your skeleton all have coordinates that are being updated and changing all the time as you're moving. And that can be a real problem for machine learning. So we look for inspiration from dance theories, like Laban movement analysis and viewpoints, and we synthesize those to create our own representation to maybe help the computer better understand and recognize human movement. For instance, the dancer on the left here, instead of just having a skeleton with numbers on her across time, the computer also sees that her spine is uh, raised and curved, that her limbs are symmetrical, that She's low in the vertical plane. And unlike some of the other dancers on stage, she's supporting herself with two feet. So this language helps the computer recognize, reason about, and even generate human movement. Using machine learning, Lumini 
learns how to dance by dancing with us, putting its own twists on the moves it learns, just like a human dancer might. We collaborated with an amazing local professor to implement a prototype of Lumini in her modern improv dance classroom. We collaborated with her students on training the agents and getting their consent on the agent learning their moves, which marked real buy-in from the dancers that we were collaborating with. Students initially were kind of put off by having an AI in their space, but honestly, they, they quickly came to appreciate it for how it helped them explore creative ideas. We listened to them, they told us how the agent was and wasn't fitting into their practice, and we shaped the experience to fit their feedback. We collaborated with this professor and her students on a performance that was intended to augment the human spirit with AI. In May of 2024, we hosted the world's first improvised human AI dance performance. You can see the agent on the left appears on a transparent screen, allowing it to kind of coexist in space with the dancers on stage. The AI can mimic what the dancer is doing, copying and reciprocating what it's doing, as well as performing complementary dance moves, deciding to improvise and choose on its own how to express itself. The AI would have duets with some of the dancers on stage, while at other times it would take over the stage in very non-human ways. And that gave the dancers the opportunity to improvise with a non-human but intelligent dancer on stage that was there co-creating with them. Dancing with AI gave us something that the audience, the dancers, the technologists had simply never experienced before. I'm part of a small group of international researchers that are looking at how to augment human creativity with human-centered AI. We believe that artists can co-create with these tools and find new ideas and new forms of expression for themselves. Tools like Midjourney and DALI and ChatGPT, these could be designed to be more collaborative, having embedded in them improvisational and co-creative knowledge to co-create and collaborate with us. We see the future of these tools as distinctly involving the consent and, and involvement of the artists where the data comes from. And that these tools are part of a human co-creative process where the human heart is still at the center of it. We may not get Santa holding tacos, but collaborating with artists, we may just get something that the world has never seen before. That's where these tools can fit into our lives not to generate mediocre images or to replace our livelihoods, but much like the paintbrush or the piano, these tools are here to afford new human experience and forms of expression. Thank you very much.